Hello, welcome back to the channel. Right before I start, I would just like to say that in this video, I'm going to be covering various disturbing creatures and characters from Cartoon Network. I'm going to be working in collaboration with a guest narrator known as Sam V. I'll be putting a link in the description below so you could check out Sam V's channel. I would highly recommend checking out Sam V's channel and subscribing so you could stay up to date with his latest videos. Sam V is a talented creepypasta narrator and I would highly recommend checking out his work. I would just like to say thank you Sam V for collaborating with me in this video. It's been an honor and I appreciate it greatly. The Veggie Puppets from Mad. Mad was a sketch comedy series that aired on Cartoon Network from 2010 to 2013. Based on the magazine of the same name, the series featured a variety of different sketches and different animation styles. It channeled the energy of the popular magazine by mocking celebrities, current movies, and other aspects of pop culture, and the varying animation styles made it stand out amongst the other Cartoon Network shows. But while it definitely made the series very unique, the varying animation also led to some more bizarre sketches that felt really jarring to most people watching this on Cartoon Network. One of the creepier sketches in this variety was a parody of Veggie Tales entitled Veggie Tales of the Crypt. The sketch features this creepy puppet version of Bob the Cucumber, a rotting vegetable hidden in the fridge with a dark cackling voice, one tooth dangling out, and long messy gray hair. Instead of telling us stories about good Christian morals, this Bob the Cucumber tells us terrifying tales of monstrous revenge performed by these creepy vegetable puppets. Even the ones that aren't supposed to look scary, like the baby carrot, just look so... weird. And fall into the uncanny valley. I personally remember being terrified of these puppets when I was a kid. Also, why does the baby carrot have a picture of himself in his room? Lorna is a character from the 2014 miniseries Over the Garden Wall. What makes this character disturbing is the cannibalistic demon that possesses her transforming her into wicked Lorna. Lorna is a young teenage girl, probably 14 years old. She has pale skin, black hair, and dresses in a 17th century Puritan style dress. She is seen to be a kind and compassionate girl. However, when she transforms into wicked Lorna, she wears the same black dress, but her face changes completely. She has a large twisted smile with mangled teeth, her eyes sink into her head as her eye sockets widen and Lorna's face becomes much more larger, pale and lifeless. She also becomes cannibalistic and evil and will float around seeking victims to eat. The exact moment is unknown but at some point Lorna became possessed by an evil spirit that forces her to eat people. Auntie whispers Lorna's adoptive aunt uses a magical bell to control the evil spirit. When Auntie rings the bell, Lorna and the spirit become unable to disobey Auntie's orders. Auntie Whisper would constantly give Lorna work to do or else the evil spirit would take over, gaining control over the little girl. At the end of episode 7, Lorna is freed from the evil spirit when Greg shakes his frog who swallowed Auntie Whisper's magical bell. Once the bell is activated, Rit orders the spirit to leave Lorna's body, compelling the spirit to leave her body. Once Lorna is freed from the evil spirit, her skin is no longer pale. Personally, I thought it was funny how simple it was to get the spirit to leave Lorna's body just by using a magical bell. And I wonder why Auntie Whispers didn't think about doing that herself. I found the scene where Lorna transformed into wicked Lorna to be pretty disturbing, and it spooked me the first time I saw it. La Lonia from Craig of the Creek La Lonia is one of the most popular creatures in Spanish folklore. She's said to be the spirit of a woman who often punishes misbehaving kids. This legend was told as a way for parents to ensure their kids behave themselves, but it also varies depending on who's telling it as there are some darker incarnations claiming that she is a wandering spirit who drowned her kids and has been locked out of heaven, forever doomed to walk the earth. 
Other versions of the legend claim that she snatches up kids to drown them as well. In 2020, an episode of the Cartoon Network show, Craig at the Creek, entitled Legend of the Library, discussed this infamous urban legend. The episode features the three main characters, Craig, Kelsey, and JP, hearing the story of La Lorona from the character Stax. She tells them of the terrifying tale, but as she finishes up the story, the power goes out in the library. The building, once full of kids, has now become a dark, isolated space, with kids disappearing left and right. This leads the gang to think that La Lorona was accidentally summoned during the story. They all split up in an attempt to find any remaining kids in order to save them and make a quick escape. However, their attempts quickly proved to be futile, with the creature quickly snatching up every single kid in the library. Despite facing impending doom, Stax actually seems to be having a lot of fun with this, her being ecstatic that a story she loved as a kid came to life. Eventually, Craig and Stax are the last two kids in the library and are likely next to be taken away. So they perform a ritual to summon La Lorna and take her down. So cool. However, once the lights come back on and they come face to face with the creature, they discover that it was actually just the night librarian the whole time. She unintentionally scared the kids and simply just took them aside to help them clean up the mess, much to everyone's relief. Despite the fear and excitement of the night, Stax can't help but feel disappointed knowing that this fable she loved didn't actually come true. Of course, she's happy that everyone is okay, but still wishes that the story could have come to life in some way. But then again, maybe it did. You two better be kinder to your books. They don't just hold stories, you know. Books also hold grudges! The Lynch is the main antagonist of the 2010 show Adventure Time. The Lynch is a cosmic being who is the manifestation of death of all things and is over a billion years old, existing way before the Big Bang. The Lynch's first appearance is in Season 1, Episode His Hero. The Lynch's objective is to kill all life and will kill anyone or anything that stands in his way. He is smart and can learn from his mistakes and can adapt. The Lynch uses a variety of tactics and is skilled in deception. The Lynch looks like a decaying skeleton with pale white skin. He has two curled up horns on his head and large dark eye sockets with notable green glowing pupils in the center. He usually wears a robe and cape that's torn at the end and wears a small crown on his head. He doesn't talk much, only speaking in brief statements. The Lich was brought to Earth millions of years ago by a comet, possibly the same comet that wiped out the dinosaurs. The Lich physical form, however, wasn't developed until the explosion of the mushroom bomb that ended the mushroom war. Because a nuclear explosion played a role in the Lich's creation, it's probably why the Lich is obsessed with ending all life. However, later on in the show, it's shown that the Lich may actually be a genetic mutation rather than a magical being. As seen when farm world Marceline falls into the Lich's well and becomes a skeleton and Jake transforms into a version of the Lich. The only thing the Lich cares about is destroying all life. The Lich has many unholy powers fueled by dark magic. Mind control. The, the Lich has the ability to control people's minds either to telepathy or to spoken commands. Telepathy. The Lich is capable of getting inside people's minds. Rot inducement. The Lich has the power to decay anything he walks on. Possession. The Lich can possess other people. Throughout the show, the Lich has possessed several characters. Princess Bubblegum, Billy, Farm World Jake, and a snail. Flight. The Lich has the ability to fly. Death Inducement. The Lich can kill anything he comes into contact with. An example of this would be when the Lich tried to cross Iceberg Lake 
He unintentionally killed all the fish in the lake. Disintegration touch. The lich can turn anything he touches into dust, which was seen when the lich was fighting Finn and Billy. He turned Billy's gauntlet into dust. Necromancy. The lich has necromantic abilities, as seen when Finn and Jake entered the lich's lair. Pyrokinesis. The lich can set rooms on fire using his mind. An example of this would be when he possessed Princess Bubblegum. Green fire generation. The lich can generate green fire from his skeletal hands and fire it at his opponents. The lich has a few weaknesses. One would be the gauntlet of the hero, which is a gauntlet that fires intense blasts of energy, but it was destroyed by the lich when he turned it to dust. A magical sweater Princess Bubblegum gave to Finn, which can protect against the lich's fire attacks and was later used to defeat the lich, turning him into dust. But the sweater is ineffective against the lich when he's possessing someone. The lich may be susceptible to physical attacks, as seen when Billy kicked the lich in the face. The lich's own arrogance is also a fatal flaw that has led to his defeat on several occasions. The Spirit of the Harvest Moon from Courage the Cowardly Dog Honestly, I barely even need to say much more here. Just... Just look at this monstrosity. This is one of the most unsettling things you'll ever see in a children's program. What can be said that can't already be stated just by looking at it? It's a creepy, black and white, live action floating head. The horrific looking creature just unnerves me so much to my core. It just It's enough to make a young child shield their eyes in fear. And even grown adults would do the same after looking at this thing. Of course, we needed at least one character from Courage on this list. It's the scariest Cartoon Network show. It was full of infamous creepy characters like Freaky Fred, King Ramses, and whatever this thing is. These characters are all creepy in their own ways, but the disturbing realism for the Spirit of the Harvest Moon really takes the cake. Eustace, Muriel, and Courage are haunted by the spirit after they fail to grow a flower during the Harvest Moon. This angers the spirit, and his dark, booming voice echoes throughout the house. His haunting presence is made even more unnerving once he reveals his true form. A giant, disembodied head, complete with very scary close-ups of his face. It's not the soil, because you don't respect your land. You must leave it. Then you will suffer the consequences. It's hard to find a character in a cartoon who's quite as sinister as this one. The Beast is the main antagonist of the 2014 miniseries Over the Garden Wall. The Beast is a shadowy humanoid figure with two large branch-like horns on its head and has two bright eyes which may appear in different colors such as blue, pale yellow and pink. Towards the finale, it is revealed that the beast appears to be made of edelwood and has several holes that resemble the faces of his victims. The beast is the embodiment of despair and hopelessness and he manipulates situations to force those he targets to surrender to him. The beast's origins are unknown but he's probably a manifestation of human despair and depression over the course of human history. And because of this, the beast tries to cause despair and depression in the inhabitants of the unknown forest to live off of their negative energy. The beast's soul is held within a lantern which the woodsmen knock it out of the beast's hand. After that, the beast has haunted the woodsmen ever since. The beast tricked the woodsman into believing that the flame in the lantern was his daughter's soul and that he had to keep the flame lit if he wanted to keep his daughter alive. To keep the flame lit, the woodsman would have to supply the lantern with edel wood oil, which is extracted from a type of tree that forms when the beast captures the souls of children he led astray. The woodsman, however, is unaware of this. The only thing the beast cares about is his own survival. 
with little care about the suffering he causes to others. The bee's objective is to keep the lantern lit, since the lantern's flame is his soul. The beast is never seen hurting anyone directly. Instead, the beast relies on using others to get what he wants. Because of this, the beast is a master of manipulation and deception. It can also manifest itself in its victim's dreams. The beast speaks clearly and knows exactly what to say to maintain control over his victims. The beast usually has an even temper but can lose his composure if he is defied or if the lantern is threatened. The beast is also known for singing and has a song for chopping wood and another dedicated to his victims. Stop! You'll never see your daughter again! No! Switzerland! <laughs>